episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Um, today I thought we'd have a chat about how we're going to hold the wings on the glider. Kind of an important topic, uh, critical to every pilot, I'm sure. Uh, what you see in front of me is one of my uh, high-tech 3D models uh, of the wing attachment system. Um, I don't do any uh, 3D modeling and computer programs. Uh, it would be a steep learning curve for me, and I feel for the most part uh, they're uh, a wasted effort uh, because most people are not going to build uh, to the style or tolerances that 3D modeling uh, creates for you. And 2D drawings can be done quicker, easier, either by hand, I like to do them by hand, or in a standard 2D CAD package. However, for some complex structures, it can help to actually model it uh, using foam core uh, that you see right in front of you here. Uh, the advantage to that uh, is uh, multifold. Uh, it not only allows me to see how the parts are going to come together in 3D and what might intersect with something else, helps me actually uh, refine the design in terms of efficient ways of doing it. And also, uh, what most people don't realize is that when you do this, you actually discover ways, methodologies, or you reach decisions about how you're going to build the actual component. Uh, it's one thing if it's a kit uh, and the instructions are there, you're probably good to go. Uh, for a brand new aircraft, you have no idea how you're actually going to hold the parts, how you're going to jig them up uh, to get them all bonded together. It's all an unknown. So uh, 3D, cheap 3D models like this can come in very handy. So what you see right here is the uh, center wing joiner box, uh, this triangular shape here, that would be inside the uh, wing uh, in the cockpit area. The uh, center section of the wing would be this wide. Uh, the cage for the pilot would be about this wide. Uh, and there'd be some other structural fittings in here and so forth. But this would be the main wing joiner system. And how this was set up was to have two pins on each side that I just pulled out here, not this size, of course, uh, and then this tongue uh, would be attached to the wing panel out here. So this would be sticking out of the end of the wing. It would be a very stout um, component, and you would slide it into the cockpit area, and there's a centering system here that grabs that half round and to line up the holes, and you slip the pins in like this. Now, it was uh, that design is an outgrowth of what we did for some of the spar testing on the full-size wing section. Here's a chunk off of one of the tests. Uh, you can see an end pin here, and the actual pinning system that the wood dolls are in here would actually be this. There's a uh, bushing in here, carbon fiber bushing, thick wall. Uh, and the actual pin that joins the wing sections on is this 4130 chrome molly tubing, uh, rather large here. Uh, this is the size that's needed in order to carry all the shear loads that would be in that pin. And this bushing is actually formed as a piece of tubing on this tube so that when you're done, you've got a nice, smooth fit with just about the amount of slot that you want in it. Tolerances for you engineering folks. Um, so that you can wiggle it a little bit to get the pins in when you put the wing on. So, now, the pin wouldn't be this long, this weighs a lot. Uh, only going to have a length of pin that is just long enough to get through the various shear webs here and hold the wing out. So there'd be one here and one out here. And they were designed, uh, they'd be set up such that there'd be a wood plug inside this tube and then a little rod of uh, fiberglass here, fiberglass tubing rod, so that you would have a pin that's about that long, maybe a little shorter uh, to save weight, and a fiberglass handle on it so that you could just push it in from the back side uh, like that. And then there'd be a securing system. Now I worked on uh, multiple ways of securing the pins, uh, and what I found best, because there is a rear wall here, the pins have to actually go up here, up front, uh, but the, you need another shear web here to take all the bending that's occurring. Uh, so uh, it's a long ways to go to get the pin in there. 
So what I did is I was going to put in a piece of tubing here from this shear wall up to this shear wall to help guide the pin. And then this would be a little over center kind of latch here, if I can get this back out of here, a quarter turn thing, where the, the shear pin would be on the end of this rod, a little cross piece here, and that would, uh, the tube would help align it with the fitting, and in it would go like this. you do a classic quarter turn on it, and there'd be a spring pulling this back, and that would lock it in place. And then all four pins would be done that way. This tubing obviously wouldn't be PVC, it'd be a thin wall fiberglass tube, very lightweight simply to guide that pin in place. Uh, this is uh, what I actually started building. Here's uh, the core for one of the panels. You saw the panel I pulled out, and here's the core that I started building that would go in like this. And, uh, this is all set up and uh, ready to be matched up with uh, this shear web and this shear web front and rear, and set up for the pins to go through here, and I'm building along with this. And I started running into little problems. There's a little problem here. That doesn't line up quite right. Not quite enough room for this inside the wing. And I was going to sneak some of it out the bottom of the wing because it's in the cockpit area. It doesn't matter. And, oh, I'd have to step down uh, some of the cap strips uh, over uh, a little hump for the bottom sheet here. I, they just started piling up. I was very uncomfortable with it. Uh, when you have little problems like that start coming evolving, coming out of a design, that you're probably on the wrong path. Uh, you should reconsider. And I was becoming more and more uncomfortable with this design. But the thing that really got me on the whole thing was this tongue here, half an inch wide, uh, and sticks out of the wing a couple of feet. We liked it because there's a long moment arm between the two pins to help take the bending loads. However, this is heavy, this has to be built very strong, multiple plies of carbon fiber, uh, plywood, strong cap strips. But the big problem is, from here out, another 18 feet, 18, 18 and a half feet. And I just couldn't imagine, I've put together several full-size sailplanes, fiberglass ones with friends of mine, and there's always a lot of, look, bring the tip up higher, come back a little, come forward a little, tip down, until you get those pins in. Uh, most modern sailplanes use a pin on the end here and uh, one pin through the center. So you got a, a tongue and groove type thing comes together like this. You have a pin here, pin here, and, the, and a pin on this side, and they come together like this, and pin goes through the whole thing. It can still be a tad tricky to get the wings aligned and attached. And I thought, 18 feet out at the end, and I'm trying to slide this in, this half inch wide slot. And if the guy on the tip trips, falls, moves wrong, sneezes, uh, doesn't pay attention and wanders off, well, he only has to walk a short distance because of a long moment arm. It's going to cause a huge angle change here. And because he's got an 18-foot lever arm, he could just snap this right off. And you could just snap this tongue right off the end of the wing. And I thought, golly, I'm going to need some guide mechanism uh, that, help, that guides this in and keeps the tip from wandering around. As I thought through this, it just got messier and messier. And more tools and equipment involved. And I thought, golly, I'm, I'm in a design corner. I'm, I'm a little stuck here. I'm going to have to rethink this. And uh, I, I wasn't overly thrilled, and I paused on building the core material uh, for those tongues, and uh, this is where I was. And a couple of days after just sitting there looking at the darn thing and being stuck, uh, it just so happened uh, that I uh, took a nap, <laughs> pretty common for me in the afternoons, uh, being an older guy. And I woke up from the nap, and a picture popped in my head. A, a vision of what the right design was. And uh, what I didn't even realize at the time was is that design involved rotating how the loads are carried by 90 degrees. And it greatly simplified the whole thing. This structure is so complex, uh, I didn't trust analyzing this by hand, and I was going to have this uh, 3D model actually built in a solid modeler and send it out for finite element analysis so I didn't end up overbuilding it and making it unduly heavy and making sure that all the loads were carried properly. It's a pretty complex structure, uh, not amenable to hand analysis. Yet the new design, I thought, oh, well, that's much simpler. I can analyze that by hand. 
And let me show you what that looks like. And I built one that looks like the picture I saw when I woke up from my nap. And here it is. So this is a, a portion of it. Uh, this would be, uh, this portion here would be this shear web right here that goes out uh, along the wing. Uh, that's the back side of the D tube. And I thought, if I just add this thing on top like this, this shape here, um, I can uh, carry the loads right around like that. Now, the original plan for the cap strips was to use these pull-truded carbon fiber strips. Uh, I had this made in China. Uh, I bought a big spool of it. In the United States, you can only get this in like eight foot lengths. Uh, but I contact the factory that makes this stuff in, in the Hong Kong area, and uh, I asked them uh, to not cut it, to spit me out 140 meters of it, uh, and uh, they did that, and two weeks later I had a big spool of it. It was good to go. So the plan was, uh, this would start out at the tip, uh, it would go on the cap of the shear web, and then there'd be a clamp here and we'd bond in these up, and literally this would wrap around the end, just like that. Uh, it's flexible enough to do that. And then it would take four layers of this uh, to carry the loads. Uh, this material is good to 320,000 PSI. Uh, and it looked like a slick design. You get these wrapped around here, top and bottom, wrapped all the way around. You're carrying a hoop stress load here. And then overwrap with carbon fiber. There'd be carbon fiber face sheet, face sheet, and then overwrap the top with carbon fiber to uh, make the whole thing a full unit like this. So what I did was I took essentially this and rotated it 90 degrees and it created this triangular shape with a round front end on it. And the plan was, now this would be in, in the middle of the wing, uh, in the cockpit area, It'd be longer than this. This is a, just a simulation of it. And what we have here is the two quarter inch shear webs that you saw on the first design have been rotated up 90 degrees. And we've taken the shear web, essentially, uh, the same half inch thick shear web is still here, but rotated it 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. And instead of our pins going in fore and aft, the pins going in vertical. So this tube would go in vertically here, and there'd be a short section of it. There'd be a section of it about this long, and another section of it that long, and all held together by a fiberglass uh, rod. Uh, where there's little wood blocks inside and glue in the fiberglass rod. So you've got a, a two-piece system that's on one rod and a piece of tubing in between here to help guide it, and in she goes like that. And then you'll have metal only where you need it, uh, and that's the heavy weight of the whole system. And uh, in between, you don't need anything. You only need a little, little bit, just like that, to cover that uh, clevis arrangement there. So, so far, so good. And I thought, ah, slick. Rather than um, running the cap strips this way on the shear web, I'm going to put them on the front like this. In fact, I'm put, put them on like this. Just stack them up, put two on this side, and then this baby would come here and wrap around just like this. In fact, that's how this radius was chosen, was the radius that would allow this carbon fiber to wrap all the way around and, and putting it in a hoop stress load again, that way. So rather than the cap strips going on the top like this, they go on the face, front and rear, and that would actually be underneath the carbon fiber face sheets. Uh, so, and the carbon fiber would overwrap over the top and the D tube comes on down and it's all bonded together. And this is actually superior because you're gonna get more bending stiffness out of this material this way rather than this way. Uh, in this way we're using the structure, the foam, the foam and the plywood to provide a stiff backing for this to stiffen it up. And this way, uh, we just attach it to the foam core, put the carbon fiber over it, solid. So I made this uh, wonderful 3D model here in my foam core that I like. And I thought, you know, much easier to build. Build this, is, uh, build the shear web entirely flat uh, on the table. Build these components flat bond them onto the shear web. This has a shear web back here, goes into these fittings. And then I, I was pretty happy with this design. Uh, but as I worked on doing all the measurements to see how this would fit inside the wing uh, for 
the, uh, the cockpit area. This has to fit all inside the cockpit area, and there's structural members that run fore and aft to support the pilot, which is going to be way back here. Uh, it got a, a little more problematic. This is a pretty big box. It's uh, six inches wide here, it's pretty tall. And I was having problems fitting this all inside the wing, and I was thinking about tilting these and all different kinds of little adjustments to make it work. Uh, as I was fiddling around with that, I thought, uh, and gosh, these are only a quarter inch thick here. And the material that I had brought in is about a half an inch thick. And it's way more than I need to go around this bend like this. And I thought, well, I don't really need all that material. I have this handy dandy pultruded carbon fiber that's only a quarter inch wide and much thinner. And uh, because it's a quarter inch wide, it'll fit this plate perfectly, go right around that hoop like that, and there we go. And then the pin goes down in the middle and all the loads are carried this way straight across the cockpit area. And as I thought about this, I thought, oh, gosh, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I could use this for cap strip over here too. And not only that, this bends much tighter uh, than the thicker wall stuff. This stuff is one millimeter thick, uh, which comes out to about 0.04 inches, and this is only 0 .0235, less than a 32nd of an inch thick. And I'll just use more layers of this, and it bends quite easy. Uh, and I thought, well, gosh, I got a big spool of this stuff. I spent almost $500 getting it here, 140 meters of it. Uh, and it's, it's to see that go to waste, and I'm running these all the way. I'm going to run these all the way out to the tip, um, hmm. and I'm going to have to order uh, several spools of it because there's going to be multiple layers, and I'm going to need two pieces tall like this to cover the whole half inch. And uh, I didn't like the answers. I was seeing another thousand dollars go out the door, uh, and then it dawned on me. I don't know why it didn't dawn on me sooner. You know, sometimes the best ideas are the last ones to arrive. There's no reason for this to be this wide. Uh, it doesn't need to be this wide for any particular reason. Uh, it's not that these face sheets are carrying all the load. The load's carried in these strips that wrap around the outside. This could be, you know, an inch wide if you wanted, uh, as long as you put enough hoops around it and carry the load. So, this design went away. I got I'll throw that back there and I'll pull up the final one. I'll show you where we are today. So here we are with what I hope, sincerely believe, is the final design. And you can see here I've narrowed this up to three inches. Uh, and I changed the fitting from being offset off the back side of the shear web to uh, straddling the shear web. And you actually see the shear web sticks up above it. That allows me to make these two fittings parallel to each other, which makes wing assembly easy on the alignment. And that way it might, makes it much easier to deal with the slope that's in the shear web. The shallow slope here becomes problematic when you want to get this fitting uh, parallel to the bottom fitting. Uh, you've got some small yet critical angles to deal with, and they're not critical in terms of uh, design and building, they're critical in terms of field assembly. Uh, the parts have to be able to slide together without binding. Uh, and there's also the issue of the leading edge tube. At the very leading edge of the wing, there's an inch and a half diameter carbon fiber tube here, and a pin comes in this way to fasten the outer wing into the cockpit area and take the torsional loads. The leading edge is not at the same sweep angle as the spar is, and there's another alignment issue there. Uh, and because this can slide, slide in like this, as you're coming in, you can come in at an angle, you can accommodate the different angle that's at the leading edge from the shear web as these come together. Now I have a little dowel rod in here uh, just for the mock-up, but it would be the same pin. This pin's going to run all the way through here. Two pieces of steel, same fiberglass rod concept, guide tube of fiberglass over here so it all slides together. So rather than having to put in four pins like on the other wing, you only have to put in two. One, two, and the main spars are done. There's two pins on the rear spar, left and right. Four pins, the wings are on. Uh, much better, much simpler, much more straightforward. This material will go around a three-inch radius quite easily, just like that. 
And these are a half inch tall here. These are quarter inch wide. So two of these here will do the job. So this is a, will be a plywood core, air, half inch thick aircraft plywood core. And I'm gonna wrap these guys around. Uh, but I don't have enough material. Uh, I can't get long enough pieces unless I special order it to go out 18 feet, go around the end, go all the way back out to the tip 18 feet. And then it dawned on me. It was like, oh, stop and make the calculation wrong. Uh, what if we ran this material like I was thinking of before on the side here like this? Now, it can't go around the three inch uh, diameter uh, curve there. It's too stiff for that. But if I put two of them on here, just like this, and as I run them up here, you'll see that they're slightly wider than this fitting. So these can be bonded into the shear web, carbon fiber face sheet on here. And then these cut to slide over the top. And then this fitting gets bonded in place. It'll get bonded on here. And there'll be uh, angle brackets here, actually, to be filler here, and a sheet here, and over the top. And this is very similar, highly analogous to what we did um, for the test section of the wing, that seven foot section. You can go on the site and you'll see video of us testing it. These fittings here will be very similar to what we used on that wing. And we know those fittings work. Uh, we tested them, they held up just fine. Uh, these are a little different. The fittings on that uh, test section were uh, three quarter inch thick solid carbon fiber. They were very heavy, about two and a half pounds. These fittings will be about one pound. Uh, so we're going to cut the weight in half. But those fittings relied on the strength of the fitting, uh, the tear-out str tear out strength for the bolt, and the tensile strength across this fitting here for its overall strength. Because I'm going to run these strips around here, once again rotating the loads 90 degrees from the way I was going to carry them before, now we're not relying on this core material to take the load here. All the load is carried in the uh, cap strips that go around the outside. Uh, and it only takes uh, three layers of this on each side. So there's a total of six pieces. One, two, and then three layers this way. And that will carry the 20 some odd thousand pounds of load that I have to carry at six Gs with a one and a half safety factor. And then here's the kicker. I can get these eight feet long and if I leave three feet of it, if it comes back here, we're coming off of here, and if I have three feet from the end of that fitting out along the spar, these are inside the shear web face sheets, and it's all bonded together like this. I have three feet of bonding length here for two of these pieces. So you're a half inch wide, three feet long, and I stopped to make the calculation on what load that will carry, and I was a little shocked. It's 72,000 pounds. Now, I only have to carry 20 some odd thousand pounds in spar caps at maximum load. That bond length gives me 72,000 pounds of uh, lap shear strength, way more than enough. So, these, these cap strips will be on here and they'll go all the way in to the end of the shear web like this. These guys will go over the outside like this, around the hoop, back down here, and then bond onto the whole thing for three feet and we got the loads carried. Uh, the whole thing is lighter, it's simpler, it's easy to build, uh, all the materials that I have on hand, um, easy for other people to get. And let me tell you, if you think it's hard to get this stuff out of China, it's not. Wow, they were really helpful. Um, they answered emails immediately. And uh, if I didn't want the size, I actually originally asked for uh, one millimeter by 13 millimeter. And they said, well, we don't make that size, but we'll make it for you, we'll make you a die. And, and we'll actually make that size uh, strip for you. And the die will cost you $210. And I thought, wow, $210 for a die, it's a bargain. And I almost had them custom make it for me. And then I asked him, I says, well, what size do you make that? Yeah, it's close. And he says, well, we make one by 10. And I says, send me a spool of what you got. And he says, well, we don't actually have any in stock, but we'll run off some for you. He says, well, how long is that gonna take? And the guy says, one day, we'll do it tomorrow. And they did. Did it the next day, shipped it out to me, DHL, and I had it in a, about a week. And it was really quite amazing. Uh, so, actually, pretty easy to get. You go on Alibaba, you look for pultruded carbon fiber, a bunch of manufacturers come up. I can't tell you that they're all as good as the one that I ran into. 
but the one I ran into is quite good. So that's where we are right now. You can see how the rib is going to be here. There's actually three structural ribs on each side. This is the center line rib, this rib number one. Uh, and then there's a rib that's here that provides the pilot support structure. Uh, and then there's a rib out here that provides the support for the pilot's cage to be attached. And if you remember, we've had discussions about how I'm not carrying the pilot's loads through the pilot's cage. Uh, the pilot will actually be attached directly to the wing, uh, much as a regular hang glider. And what that allows me to do is make the pilot's cage much, much lighter, probably say five pounds. Uh, because I'm not carrying uh, thousands of pounds of uh, load under G with a pilot hanging from the cage and trying to move that all up into the wing, the cage only needs to be strong enough for ground handling loads, the weight of the glider on the ground, any landing loads, twisted around and gusty winds and up and down. But that's fractional compared to what you would get under high G maneuvers with a pilot suspended on the cage. So I'm running the pilot's loads right up to the wing. So there's going to be two structural ribs here that run aft and have attachment points for the pilot back here. The straps will go up just like this right up uh, to those attachments. There'll be several. Uh, locations so we can shift the CG around if necessary. Uh, the center ribs uh, will also be structural. There'll be two of these side by side, so you have a full one inch here, uh, half inch wide rib here, half inch wide rib here. Uh, it'll be built out of carbon fiber. So and then the handy dandy thing is these thin strips, because they are so flexible, in order to make these structural ribs will actually be the cap strips for the ribs. Uh, there'll be two of these across the rib, every half inch rib like this. And it's kind of neat that they will go right around the front end. And with a little clamping, we get them on there. And uh, these are incredibly strong. It's going to make this rib really, really strong with the carbon fiber face sheets. <coughs> Excuse me. Inch and a half diameter carbon fiber tubing here. So when these guys come around, they're going to bond onto that tube. And the torsional loads, there's a... Uh, lifting loads that are here that's a result of the torsion being put on the D-tube like this and this is going to transfer the loads from the pilot up into the D-tube right along these strips. Each one of these strips can carry about 1800 pounds so I don't need too many of these strips to uh, uh, do that job. And uh, the, you'll see that this is an empty box here. It's not actually how it's going to be. Uh, this rib will actually be solid in this area and the rib will be notched uh, to accept uh, the top and bottom uh, fittings. Uh, one will sit on, it, actually, this one will be sitting on the build bench like this for jigging up. The rib will come in over the top, uh, and it essentially sits flat. There's almost nothing down here. I'll just put in a small filler piece down here after it's all said and done. Rib comes over the top, and uh, then we can uh, wrap it with uh, the carbon fiber, and after that's done, then I can put these uh, shear webs on the front and rear. So the shear webs will actually be in sections between the ribs, and the ribs will be solid going through here. And that will allow me to run uh, a structural member here and a structural member here. So we'll end up with a uh, essentially a two-layer, uh, essentially truss structure, uh, except in the shape of a rib. In addition, it's going to have the top and bottom uh, skins of the aircraft, which are carbon fiber on the inside, and that'll help distribute the loads over a larger area so we don't get concentrated loads. And this will all be buildable flat on a workbench, uh, so that's kind of handy that way. Uh, these components will be uh, match drilled to these components, and actually the pin system will be set up like this uh, when these face sheets are bonded on so that everything aligns, and then the shear web will come in and bond onto these and then removed, and then it can do all the overwrap work here uh, to make sure that the loads are properly distributed into the shear web and out to the cap strips. So there's the final design. This allows me to, uh, it allows to bring in the wing like this, and we can run at a little bit of an angle like this as needed uh, to accommodate the uh, angle of the leading edge tube. Uh, the rear spar attachment is set up very similar to this one. You've probably seen it elsewhere on the website. It's a multi-finger, almost looks like a hinge type system like this, and the pin goes, one pin goes all the way through. Uh, very simple, very lightweight. And there we go, that's the final design. Now, of course, this isn't designed to fold up. That's not the intention of this. This wing does not fold up. It just comes out and goes into a box on top of your 
car, truck, or van, or whatever you're using. Uh, this will probably be about, uh, I'm guessing, two or three pounds lighter than this big triangular box. Easy to analyze because it's just hoop stress around here and around here. Uh, I've made the drawings. I'm already cutting out these. Uh, I'm getting ready to cut out these parts and make these parts. Uh, these are solid half-inch thick uh, aircraft plywood. These will be uh, quarter-inch thick aircraft plywood on their ends, and then they have a foam core with uh, uh, plywood front and rear, and then uh, the carbon fiber wrapped around the outside. So there we go. That's how the wing's going to attach. Uh, I'm very happy with this solution. Uh, this pultruded material that's thin is uh, amazing stuff, incredibly strong, versatile. Uh, because it is a material that I haven't worked with before, as I do my mental design work, I don't always picture the best way to use this material. Uh, and uh, it took a few months before it dawned on me. It's like, oh, I can make maximum use of the capabilities of this material by applying it in somewhat unique manner by wrapping it around the fittings and using the thin stuff uh, to reduce the size of the fittings and just do more layers of it. Uh, so uh, anytime materials become available like this, you really have to rethink how you do your designs. And sometimes it takes some trial and error. And you got to go through several uh, design configurations before you figure out the best way to carry the loads, lightest actually the best strength to weight ratio design that you can do. Uh, and sometimes a little frustrating, you get stuck sometimes, so you keep plugging away at it, uh, you eventually come up with uh, uh, some pretty cool uses for the new materials. And did not have this when I built my first wing. If you had to do this with unidirectional carbon fiber toes and do that wrap, it would have to be uh, about three or four times thicker. Uh, and consequently three or four times heavier. Uh, so it saves a lot of weight, saves a lot of work, uh, a little bit more expensive, but we can deal with the cost because of all the advantages it gives us. So stay tuned. Uh, if you're not already one of my patrons, uh, once again, I give you the, give you the line that, uh, hey, this isn't cheap to do this, and I could use a little help. Uh, so go over to my Patreon site, become a patron, get all the technical information that you're probably scratching your heads about here watching this video going, well, what dimension of that are you using? How many of that are you using? What, what, how thick are these panels? And how thick are the face sheets and all that? That's all over on Patreon. The, the folks who uh, pony up their little five bucks a month uh, get all the technical details as we go along. Plus, if you're a Patreon member for one year, you get your name on the wing, on the prototype wing. So you'll sort of be there with me when I make that first flight. But in the meantime, stay tuned, keep your fingers crossed, wish me luck, and we're going to keep plugging along here, and in a year or so, uh, we should be ready to fly this thing. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll be back soon. Bye for now.